Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Aircraft carriers are integral to the way modern militaries function. These 1,000-foot-long vessels can operate as mobile air bases, storing anywhere from 60 to over 130 planes and helicopters and allowing them to operate far from land. Despite for being around for over a century, the process by which aircraft can land and take off from these drastically reduced runways is still very dangerous. Though accidents are uncommon, they pose a significant risk considering the number of weapons and crew members on board and the distance from any potential rescue. As early footage indicates, it took the Navy years to come up with the catapult system which is used to launch aircraft safely from the bow of the ship. The same can be said of the special arresting cable system that allows the planes to come to a complete stop after just a few hundred feet. However, the results would be disastrous if the plane missed its mark due to crew error or mechanical failure. In the past, accidents have jeopardized crew members and led to the loss of billions of dollars in equipment. This is exactly what happened to an FA-18 Super Hornet in 2015. Luckily, both pilots were able to eject and nobody was injured. Unfortunately, the recovery process was very long and very expensive. The arresting cable landing system employed on nearly all modern aircraft carriers is specifically designed to avoid this outcome. For instance, any plane intended to operate from an aircraft carrier will be fitted with a special tail hook. This hook can be deployed at the back of the fuselage during the aircraft's approach to the flight deck. As it makes contact with the runway, the tail hook engages with the steel wire rope stretched across the deck. As this happens, the kinetic energy of the landing aircraft is transferred to a system of hydraulic dampeners located below the deck. These absorb that energy almost like a large rubber band, allowing the aircraft to come to a complete stop in just a few hundred feet or less. Despite how precarious this operation might seem, the system has proved incredibly successful, and mishaps are typically rare. It's all thanks to the great coordination between the pilots, tower, and flight deck crews. Early naval engineers had the opposite problem when it came to helping planes take off from an aircraft carrier. The average runway on even the biggest ships is 300 feet long, which is hardly enough room for even the lightest planes to become safely airborne. The solution to this problem was to develop a special catapult system. First installed aboard aircraft carriers during the Second World War, these assisted takeoff systems boost planes to speeds of around 170 miles per hour, giving them the best possible chance of remaining in flight upon reaching the end of the deck. Of course, the aircraft needs to be under power already. For this reason, 
the planes will operate their engines as if they were flying while remaining locked in the parked position. For jet aircraft, carriers will deploy massive blast shields to deflect the thrust. While running a ship with thousands of sailors on board, one cannot simply pull into a safe harbor whenever a problem arises. In some instances, a boat might be thousands of nautical miles away from a friendly harbor and any potential assistance. This is one of the many reasons why the U.S. Navy makes such an effort to prioritize emergency readiness. In fact, crew members frequently participate in various drills and exercises designed to prepare them for worst-case scenarios. Among the most important are flight deck crash and salvage drills. Within minutes, first responders are required to don special fire-resistant suits and react exactly as they would should a plane crash or malfunction. When we're on truck, basically, I'm gonna get the main purpose of a firefighting truck, P-25, to respond at any emergency needed for any crash in the LA or any fuel station fire. Basically, in the in the instance of an aircraft coming down in LA and crashes, we'll be the first responders. Uh, my job as a driver is to perform the same procedures as well as protecting my crew in the case of an emergency. Of course, one of the biggest reasons why pilot casualties have become so rare is due to one single invention, the ejection seat. Since the Korean War era, most military jets have been equipped with rocket-propelled ejection seats that can remove pilots from their planes in a split second. These devices can differ slightly in function, but mostly follow the same basic principle. Upon triggering an ejection, small explosive charges will first remove or rupture the canopy. After that, the seat itself will be launched dozens of feet into the air by special rocket packs under the seat. Despite the overall success of the technology, ejection seats are continually being redesigned and improved upon. In order to do this without putting pilots at risk, the companies that design these seats will turn to locations like the Holloman High Speed Test Track in New Mexico. This facility allows engineers to test ejection seat efficiency by directing them along a 40-mile track at hundreds of miles per hour. Each seat will be outfitted with a state-of-the-art crash test dummy with built-in sensors to measure speed impact, g-forces, and more. The data collected from both the test vehicles and the crash test dummies enables ejection seat engineers to create safer, faster, and more efficient ejection systems to reduce casualties. Simulations and other such test environments have been a part of military training procedures for over half a century. In fact, the Air Force has several digital flight simulators located at training bases all around the country. But they don't just involve climbing into the cockpit and taking the virtual plane for a spin. These simulators are here to mimic every aspect of caring for and maintaining a plane. Here, pilots can learn more about the complex machines they're assigned to operate. As technology has improved, flight simulations have become more and more detailed. Not only do they simulate a real-life flying experience, but they drastically reduce the cost associated with using real aircraft.
As crucial as simulators are, there's nothing quite like the real thing. When it comes to pushing the limits of what man and machine can do, the best of the best naval aviators are invited to a special elite training course. It's known as the Navy Strike Fighter Tactics Instructor Program, but it's commonly referred to as Top Gun. Founded in 1969, the program was designed to improve pilot tactical training after heavy losses were suffered during the Vietnam War. It remains a unique opportunity for pilots of all types, allowing them to learn excellent dogfighting skills while soaring over the desert at 1,000 miles per hour. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.